Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 54 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster suit project. Obviously, by the fact that it's part 54, you can tell I've done quite a lot of work on this. I've done several walking tests in the whole suit, which you can look at in some of the fairly recent videos. And last time, I designed an electronic control system, which is distributed in nodes, sending data around on a serial network for all of the control and things in the suit. So the plan for the last few episodes of this project is to go around putting that control system in, activating all the features. Obviously we've got panels which open here. We've got panels which open here with weapons in. And obviously the opening faceplate, which I don't think I can... Let me just go and turn that knob. So we're going to activate all of those features and also do fill-in sections and bits and pieces as I go. By the end of that, hopefully, the suit is going to be finished. I've got one small issue mechanically, which is the servo that lifts these isn't really strong enough. So it doesn't work very reliably and the servos get stuck and sort of sit there chattering and things. So I'm going to design um, a mechanism that's a bit better than that with some gears and things that's more like the mechanism that prints the helmet. And that's these white gears in the back here, we've got, which have got a much bigger motor. So I'm going to get another motor and we're going to make a replacement lifter for this part of the mechanism. The way this currently works is I've got actually a radio control servo. It's a fairly hefty one, but that turns this huge pulley here. And there's a smaller pulley at the bottom, which that cord also runs around. And the cord's anchored about here on this white block. So as this turns, it winds this whole mechanism up and down, but the servo is not really up to it, so I'm going to use another motor and turn a gear to turn this pulley. Instead of using an RC servo, I'm going to use a cordless screwdriver motor. So these are obviously pretty torquey, and that's going to turn a little gear, which turns a big gear around the outside of that pulley. So I've already cut one of these open. Um, basically, these gearboxes are plastic, so they're fairly lightweight, but they do fall to pieces. The black piece and the cream piece separate unless they're actually kept in here they've got screws that hold them in either side so i've actually hacksawed off the rest of the plastic here i'm going to do the same with the other side so i can keep this piece of the mounting and i can clamp that in and i'm going to print a gear to go on here and a mount for this and a gear to face up to the existing pulley here are the bits and pieces of the original mechanism including that pulley which um, had a recess and the servo is mounted on and this is the stick it's mounted on where the servo is mounted in the middle and the small pulley at the bottom. So basically what you see here is a big gear that's going to be solvent welded onto that one. I'm going to replace the mounting where the servo is with two bearings to hold the shaft that this spins on. And then this is my small gear that goes on the motor with its captive nut to fix it on. I just need to make an additional bracket to hold that motor shroud. So my gears are printed and I've bonded those on the back with a solvent weld of acetone. So that's now going to turn the whole thing. These were the servos. They are fairly hefty metal gear ones, which were turning the middle of this, which is why it didn't have very much force. So now this is going to turn around the edge. This is more powerful than the servo, plus it's geared right down. So these, of course, got the captive nuts in and the gears are fitted on really well. And I just... Um, basically cut off the bit holder so it's a hex shaft that fits perfectly in the end of here. So that should be pretty good. And then this is going to be held on a replacement for the servo. So the original bracket had this hole in the servo fitted in. I've now made this instead that fits in exactly the same hole. It has a bearing either side which will hold a shaft that supports this. So that will be in there and then I just need to make a bracket to hold this to this bracket so that it can turn the things round. I've attached these pieces to here, so we've now got this thing that rotates and the, what was happening was this was getting anchored and this goes around this small pulley, so as this piece turns, which was motorised by the servo, of course this cord goes round and that pulls the thing up and down. So what I've now done is made these motor brackets, so let's just get the right one, and they're slightly tapered to match the motor, so I'm pretty sure this is ABS, so I can solvent weld this straight in and it'll be fixed there forever. And then this is going to go across the top here, 
so I can get that in exactly the right position to make sure those gears mesh really well and I can obviously move it all around just by solvent welding these two surfaces together and then we can put it all back together hopefully so I'll get those mounted and we'll see how well it works okay so I fitted those motors they've solvent welded in quite nice so I've uh, made sure they mesh okay and uh, now we can give this a spin and see what happens so I'm just going to power that up I think that should be okay it's driving that belt round okay so we'll get those refitted and they should have more than enough power to lift the shoulders up all right there's definitely enough torque there i need to implement the position and speed control but if i just give this a little go obviously far too fast they're three volt motors and i'm running them on an 11.1 volt battery so um but there's definitely enough uh power in there to pick that up so let's put a feedback pot on and then we can implement the control system from last time and probably PID control this. I've made a kind of hub here which goes right over the joints and you can see it's got a split in it and a hole in the ends and in that hole I am going to insert a potentiometer and on the end of that is a lever so once that's inserted in there this lever will solvent weld onto this piece and then I can use it to measure the angle of these two joints um, and that's going to be how I know where it is and that means I can do things like slow down as I get to the target position and accurately tune how uh, much it opens and closes instead of just using end switches. You'll find this is very similar to a thing I did in the rest of the head mechanism. So we've got another very similar thing here which is for the helmet lifter. This one I already wired in and tested so I know that works. But the first thing we need to do now is go and remove all of the old electronics get the new control system in and then we can try controlling these things over Bluetooth. This is what's in here now, so I've got uh, basically two Arduino Unos, that's the um, Internet of Things device which is a photon from Particle which uh, needed internet connectivity though to connect and operate with a smartphone so I'm taking that out and putting a Bluetooth device in. This is a really good device though but not really suitable for this project in the end. Um, we've got some other things floating around, power supplies, I think that's a Darlington array, another power supply, and another power supply. So those are all voltage regulators, can't even remember why they're there. And obviously there's masses of wires going everywhere that tries to control all of the NeoPixel, all of the servos in those guns up there, the motors and everything. So uh, what we're putting in, of course, is the control system I built last time, which is much more of a node-based approach. So all I'll have to do is have one master Arduino, I'll run sort of a big power wire to everything, and then five volts and ground and one data wire. And that's gonna be it really. So it's gonna make this lot a much neater and bring all of these lots of wires up to the nodes that are placed around the suit. So out with the old and in with the new. Here's the Arduino Mega from last time. Have a look at last week's episode to find out what I'm planning to do. But basically we've got a five volt power supply, the Mega which is the main brain. And all I need to run out of this to so the rest of the suit is basically five volts that will come out of this regulator. So that's two wires and one from one of the serial wires. So I'll just have three wires that go all around the suit in a network and all the other nodes are smaller Arduinos dotted around locally. So I'm gonna probably run battery power as well um, so there will be other batteries in the suit, probably one in each arm, maybe one in each leg, haven't really decided. For higher power things like really bright LEDs and there may be other 5 volt regulators dotted around. But on the whole this should be the central point for distribution. Here's one of my output nodes, so this is either going to control the helmet motor or the shoulders. So I've got an Arduino Pro Mini there and an L298 motor driver so I can handle the current. And obviously the potentiometer for feedback will go into this as well as the serial coming in and some power from the battery will come up to the motor driver then we can PWM and position control it. So don't forget to check out that last week's video to find out how all of this serial stuff works. I've just done a little bit of wiring to the master Arduino Mega here so I've now got power and a nice switch so I can switch it on which will be mounted up eventually. There we go and we should find the display it says Jarvis ready which is great so this is just exactly the same as last week but put onto this plate and obviously this cable is the I squared C in power that takes this up to near the helmet so I can see it. This is going to fit down in the body. So all I need now is the serial out that goes to all the devices 
and some 5 volt and battery wires to come up to go off to all the other things. I've wired in the rest of the uh, wires here for power and serial out and I've also added the Bluetooth adapter and that's plugged in with a couple of things here so I can unplug it to reprogram the Arduino. So I'm connected to that with my phone and we should find if I send um, the characters, so let's send that A character, we should see the display now says option one and if I send B it should activate and I can keep scrolling through and as before that uh, those commands come back onto my phone screen as well which works pretty well. So obviously these will be the functions of the suit, so some of these will be open faceplates, fire shoulder cannons and so on. But this all seems to be working for now, so we can put this part in the suit and now work on the nodes. So back in the back of the suit I've mounted this, it's not actually fixed but it will be there so I can still get to the USB socket and so on. My power switch is here, uh, floating around and the battery is just hiding down here, that will be mounted up on this uh, piece of wood eventually but for now I might need to take this out so I haven't fixed it in too well. The uh, wires go up here, I've got my display temporarily fixed midway but that will eventually be of course right up in the helmet somewhere so I can see what it says essentially but for now it's there so I can see what it says while we're working in the back and my wires run all the way up, all the way up over one shoulder and that's going to be right here, so obviously this is the helmet stuff, so we're going to put a node in just above that shoulder, which is going to be up here, so that I can control the helmet to start with, so that's going to be the first thing to get activated on this new system. My first node is implemented, so I've put a little piece of stripboard stuff in here to um, make a little junction box, because obviously I need to run the same wires out to the shoulders, so this is ground at the bottom, then we've got battery power, 5 volt power and serial. And of course the uh, battery power there goes into my L298 motor driver. Those are the motor wires coming out. These are the pot wires coming in. And this big loop of orange and yellow is the uh, pins from the Arduino driving the motor in either direction. So of course there's quite a lot of wires I need to tidy up there. But it's all centralised around the thing that is being operated. Leaving the rest of the body clear just with those four wires. And my little display. So if we zoom in on the display here and I take my smartphone which is of course out of shot but I can scroll through those options let me just connect to Bluetooth so I can now scroll through on my phone through the different menu options which you should be able to see changing on the display so let's scroll back to option 1 and hit B and we should see activate 1 and if you're lucky you can hear the helmet operating so let's just give that a go now you can see it so I'm just going to scroll through the option there so that's option two, and we need to scroll back to option one, and I'll hit B, and up goes the helmet and faceplane. I've hit B again, it's on a toggle, so it comes back down. We'll have a look at that from the front later on. The next thing to do is do the same thing with these shoulder mechanisms. I'm just dealing with the shoulder here. There it is up there. So I've got my same node here with an L298 and an Arduino Uno, but I'm finding that this isn't going to source enough current, unfortunately, so I've got both of the channels paralleled up to give me a total of 4 amps, but it's still not quite enough to lift that shoulder. It's very sluggish and this heatsink is very hot, so I'm going to have to swap it out with this, which is the BTS 7960. And if you buy these in the right place, you can get them on eBay for about 7 or £8, pounds, so I'm not too bothered about that. But this can handle 40 amps, and it's what I'm using in BB-8 to drive its motors. BB-8 dissipates the best part of a kilowatt of power, so this should be more than enough. It's going to be about 40 amps max. I probably need more than 5 and less than 10. Here it is, just above one shoulder. Obviously it doesn't fit on the 3D printed mount anymore, but my BTS 7960 has its own screw holes, which are just screwed on. The Arduino's there. Got a few cable management issues to sort out, as you can see. But that's okay, we can cable tie those around nearer the time when I finish everything off. So let's see how that works. This is option two on my smartphone menu. So again, I'm just using Bluetooth to control it because I don't have the hand controllers in. So there we go, that's closed. Makes quite a satisfying sound. Going up's not quite as nice, but it works. And of course A is, uh, option one I should say, is still the helmet, so if I scroll around to that. So that's opening, and that's closing. 
And as always, the options are displayed on that little screen in the suit as well, which will be in within my view. I don't have another BTS 7960, unfortunately, so I can't do the other side right now, so that's going to have to be in a future video. But for now, I can show you what it looks like from the front with the one side. So I'm on option two already. Let me just hit that. So it makes a rather satisfying motor sound as well. It's a bit strainy on the way up, but it is lifting it, and obviously on the way down it's not. But apart from that, it seems pretty good to me. And obviously I've got the uh, thing there that rotates on a servo, and it's got RGB LEDs in it, so the aim is it would open, then that would fire and turn round, recoil back, and then the thing will shut down again. And obviously the other, uh, if I scroll around to option one, then I've got the faceplate still works as well. And of course that has light up eyes that will um, get implemented as well. So um, I'd like to sort out the lighting when I've actually got the other side working so I can get the coordination right on both of them. There'll be an option to open both of them at fire at once and um, there's going to be one of these um, nodes that does the lighting for the eyes and for all of the lighting in these. So uh, for now I'm going to implement the chest node which is going to open these, turn on the lights and also fire the unibeam. This is my chest node, it's another Arduino Pro Mini, and the um, Darlington array that I tore out, which is basically like a little driver that can um, source some more current to power those LEDs that I've got in the sides here. So it looks a bit messy, I put another junction box in here so that I can split off the data and power, but most of these wires that are looking messy are actually going to all the things in the chest, including the unibeam and the servos and so on. Here we are around the front, so I've got the lights working, the flaps working and the unibeam firing. So if I've got my smartphone here, if I select option 3 on the menu and activate it, you should see those red lights come on, the flaps open, then the unibeam fires, shuts down and then the flaps shut again. It's taken me a bit longer than I thought to get all of those things fitted and working and obviously I had to calibrate all of those pot rotations and everything else to make sure things went to the right positions as well as building that mechanical assembly. So it looks like there's going to be more Hulkbuster videos than I said. Next time I'm going to continue working the control system into all of these things, sorting out the lighting, hopefully getting onto the arms to put the actual hand controllers in and of course those elbows are mechatronic and the hands are powered as well so we need to go and look at that and build that into the control system so those operate with the joysticks. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out the social media links in the descriptions of this video, including my Instagram account where you can see sneak peeks and pictures of other projects.